Good evening, everyone. My name is Diana Economy, and I am the Senior Associate Director of Admissions here at Ross. We are thrilled to have you all join us this evening for our uh, session on women in consulting. We thought it would be a great idea to pull this type of panel together to really give prospective students an idea of some of the opportunities that are available both post Ross in a career in consulting, but also how Ross helps you prepare for a career that's in consulting. So we will go through a variety of things and um, give a high-level overview of some of the um, key questions that we receive in consulting. And we're very thrilled to have both one of our current students as well as a panel of alumni with us to help share their insights. I wanted to let you know that um, Elizabeth Mills is here with me in Ann Arbor. And Elizabeth is one of our MBA 2s who will be graduating in 2014. And Elizabeth will be moderating the panel today. So welcome, Elizabeth. Thanks, Diana. So uh, nice to meet all of you. I am glad to be with you today. I, as Diana said, am a second year here at Ross. And I spent my summer with McKinsey and Company down in Atlanta working for the business technology practice. But before school, I had a little bit of an idea that I was interested in consulting, but not a whole lot of idea what consulting was or what a career path would look like, what it was like to be a woman in consulting. So I'm really excited to have all of these alumni on the line. I think it will be great for all of you prospective students to be able to hear their perspectives. So at Ross, um, I am involved with the consulting club, but I want to tell you all a little bit about what it's like to think about a career in consulting at Ross. Like many other things that we do here at Ross, the uh, process of re recruiting for consulting is extremely student-driven. We've got great leadership on campus and lots of peer support, lots of teaching each other. So I'm involved in the consulting club, and most of what I've learned about consulting has come through our education sessions. We have weekly sessions there, and we've also done some work this fall um, tailoring content specifically for women who are interested in consulting. We did a round of prep sessions for MBA 2s at the start of the year, and we're starting our round of sessions with MBA 1 women who will think about recruiting for internships in January and February. So the other thing I wanted to tell you all about is our fact group system. I'm what's called a fact group leader, which means I have a group of eight MBA 1 students who I meet with weekly, and basically my job is to get them jobs. So Really nice to have somebody there who is your full-time coach and a full-time resource as you're navigating what could be, as it was for me, a really unclear uh, career path when I first started out. So next, I want to kick it over to our panel. And panel, if we could get each of you to introduce yourself, um, your let's get your name, maybe a little bit about your career from before Ross, where you came from, um, and then where are you now? So maybe can we start with Allison? Allison, can you hear us? Okay, Allison might be having some trouble. How about Liz? Sure. Can you hear me, Elizabeth? We can. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. I'm Liz Lapatina. I'm a senior manager in Deloitte Consulting Strategy and Operations Practice, and I'm based out of our Minneapolis office. Um, before Ross, I worked for a small healthcare consulting firm um, called the Lewin Group that was based in the Washington, D.C. area um, and did work for pharmaceutical companies as they had drugs coming to market. Um, I did a summer internship while I was at Ross with Deloitte and joined full time. And now I continue to focus on healthcare consulting. Um, and my work is centered around helping health plans and pharmacy clients. Um, with big operational changes. So things like M&A integrations, um, healthcare reform impacts, um, anything that leads to major changes in the business of healthcare clients. Great. OK, Katie, can you uh, see, we'll see if your audio works? Hello. Can you introduce yourself? Can you hear me? Yes. OK, fantastic. Hi, I'm Katie Tamarelli, uh, was Roth 2012 grad. Uh, before business school, I was actually a software developer business analyst for a large investment bank. Um, since graduating, I um, have worked for the Boston Consulting Group out of Detroit. Um, I've been there about a year and a half um, doing a wide variety of work. Um, have done work in insurance, 
technology, financial services, industrial goods, consumer goods, and just wrapped up a case in pharmaceuticals. Um, so really looking to kind of get a wide variety of experience before I progress to the next level. Great. Okay. And how about Carmen? Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carmen Maley. Uh, I also graduated with Katie in 2012. Um, prior to business school, I worked for the YMCA of San Francisco in fundraising, so I am a true career switcher. Um, during my time at Ross, I interned at Accenture. I'm in the talent and organization practice. Um, my main focus is on organization transformation and change management. Um, and I joined full time after graduation, and, and since then I've been able to focus on a variety of different um, projects in that space, mostly organizational design and change management projects. Great. And Allison, we'll try you again. Allison? Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Thank you. Oh, good, good. Um, welcome, everyone. Sorry for um, being a little bit slow to, to join the audio, but um, I'm Allison Hydoskian. I graduated in 2010, and prior to Ross, I worked at a small, um, actually not so small anymore, but more of a boutique consulting firm called VS Associates that focuses on marketing and sales strategy and um, also does a lot of work, particularly in the healthcare space. Um, after Ross, I, um, or during Ross, I interned with BCG in Chicago, joined them full-time after Ross, and I left about a year ago to pursue my interest in education. Um, so I'm currently working in consulting in the education sector and very much relying on um, my experience at BCG and ZS, um, but doing more um, with education clients, um, either freelancing or with another education consulting firm that's called Bellwether Education Partners. Great. Okay. Well, we've got a, a nice diversity of backgrounds there as well as a diversity of what you're interested in and working on now. So I think that we also probably have a diversity of who's on the line um, in prospective students. And some people are coming to Ross with years of consulting experience and know they want to go back to consulting, whereas others might be total career changers. Um, but to make sure that we're all on the same page, First, can we just talk about what is consulting? Why, um, what is a typical day like for any of you? What are you working on right now? And what do you think brings people to consulting? Maybe any, any of those topics. We can start with anyone. Um, I'm happy to start. So this is Katie again. Um, you know, I was looking for a, a variety of work, um, working with really smart people on interesting projects. Um, it was what I really loved about my job before, was very project-based, working with really smart people. So that kind of really drew me to consulting. Um, since joining right now, I'm actually doing a recruiting role 50% uh, of my time. So I am kind of responsible for the BCG recruiting effort at Ross um, for the class of 2015, so the summer intern recruiting process right now. Um, and we'll be starting on a new case next week for an insurance company, um, looking at some of their operations work. So, you know, I really like, as you can tell from that, just the variety of work and it's always changing. Great. Liz, can you tell us what is a, a typical day in your life like? What would you say is a typical day for a consultant um, at Deloitte? Sure, and I think one of the things you'll probably hear from all of us is there's no typical day, um, and part of what we like is that variety and the fact that everything's different. Um, but sort of an example day, um, you know, I always try to get to the office a little bit before my team, a little bit before my client, and think about what are the couple key priorities for the day, both for my client and then you know, both for my project team as well as for our client. You know, where do we need to get with this project by the end of the day or the end of the week? Um, on my project right now, I'm helping a pharmacy benefits manager 
move a lot of their operations to a new vendor partner. So in a typical day, um, I may have a discussion with my client counterpart on you know, which parts of the business make sense to transition to that vendor and which parts make sense to keep internal to their business. Um, you know, I also typically uh, facilitate calls that you know, involve a lot of problem solving. So understanding you know, what is the new issue that's come up today, what does that mean to my client, what does that mean to their partner, and how can we start to make progress on resolving that issue. Um, and many times, um, you know, my, my team and I are involved in how do we help um, everybody involved um, understand the problem and understand the path to the solution in a very simple and straightforward manner. And so um, consultants get, I think, a bad reputation for, um, you know, making a lot of decks. Um, and I think, um, and, and my counterparts may agree or disagree, I think um, you can overuse decks, but they can also be um, a useful way of communicating information um, and trying to boil problems down um, when done right. And for those of you who may be new to the, the consulting lingo, a deck is kind of a set of PowerPoint slides. Um, and so it, it's a frequent way that we use to communicate our findings, our thoughts, and to simplify a problem. Absolutely. I feel like I honed some PowerPoint skills this summer that I did not know I had to start. Um, thanks, Liz. So maybe let's switch gears a little bit and hear from someone who was not a consultant before school. How did you, what did you think about consulting before you came to Ross, and how did you determine once you got to school that this was the right path for you? I, I can take that one. Um, this is Carmen. So prior to going to Ross, I worked in nonprofit, and um, one of the things that really attracted me to working in, in the consulting space was that uh, not only the diversity of projects and, and industries that I would likely have uh, an opportunity to see and work in, but also the pace of work that I would be exposed to. So knowing that I had worked in nonprofit and that's very different um, on some levels from traditional corporate business world, I wanted to be in a fast-paced environment that would allow me to grow and develop skills very quickly. And I think um, no matter what type of consulting you're, you're interested in, that's true pretty much across the board. So um, I, in terms of, of what drew me to consulting from, from business school or from my previous work after business school, um, I would say diversity of projects, really interesting work and, and pace. Great. And Allison, you, you did come in with consulting before school. Did you know coming to Ross that you wanted to stay in consulting? How did you make the decision to think about internship or full-time career once you were at Ross? Um, yeah, I, was, I thought that there was a strong possibility I would stay in consulting, but I did. Um, part of that decision happened when I was at Ross. And what I realized when I was working in um, you know, different teams with folks at Ross, because we do that a lot, um, was that the, just kind of the consulting fundamentals at VS, um, partly around kind of the, the technical skills in Excel and PowerPoint, but then also kind of um, part of what consulting teaches is the ability to, to structure ideas and to think about kind of the big picture first and then going into the details. I realized that it was a, a pretty um, useful skill set to have to tackle a whole range of topics, and um, you know, I was felt like I was able to take on um, some leadership within teams at school um, because of that consulting background. Um, ZS was a really, really great firm, and I am so fortunate for that experience. But um, as I thought about the fact that I wanted to build on the consulting skill set, I was thinking about using business school to transition to a firm um, that does a wider variety of work. Um, and BCG um, works across so many different sectors and does so, much, so many types of work. So that um, transition made sense. Great. 
Uh, well, one note for participants, I want to make sure that as you're enjoying this discussion, that you know you can submit questions too. We'll turn to you for questions at the end. So I want to make sure that you know you can submit through the chat feature anytime, um, and we're holding those. So I want to talk a little bit more. Um, Allison, you just spoke about, about working in teams here at Ross and that being great preparation. I would absolutely echo that. I spend so much of my time working with teams of people of all different backgrounds who are pushing me and oftentimes supporting me through finance and accounting and everything I had not seen before school. Um, but maybe, Katie, as you're recruiting rosters for BCG right now, can you talk about what was uh, what from your Roth experience prepared you for a career in consulting, and what are you looking for in the candidates that you're seeing right now? Um, that's a great question. So, you know, I would say what pretty much every class I took at Roth was was really helpful, and and as Ali mentioned, you know, really working in those teams. Um, I took a wide variety of classes, kind of based on uh, what topics sounded interesting to me, which is somewhat how I've been running my consulting career. Um, but, you know, I think thinking about, for, you know, interns for this year, you know, we're looking for three things. And I think there are things that every business school student can, can show and demonstrate in a few different ways. One, we're really looking for kind of a strong analytical ability, be that, you know, quantitative roles prior to business school, participating in case competitions once they arrive at Roth. Um, and then the two, the two next things are kind of communication and teamwork, um, which often go hand in hand. Um, and the Roth experience really allows people to, to work on those skills and, and really grow them and expand kind of how they think about communication and the different roles within teams. Great. And Carmen, you are also a pretty recent grad. Can you talk a little bit more about what you did at Ross, um, whether it was more teamwork, something like MAP, any resources the school provided that helped you transition to a career in consulting? I will say that I, I think Ross provides endless opportunities to um, develop those three skills that Katie mentioned. Um, being a career switcher, I focused on um, participating in the extracurricular activities to help um, develop and demonstrate those skills. So two clubs I, I participated in heavily were the Ross Consulting Club, where I took a leadership role, and um, the Community Consulting Club. The Ross Consulting Club, Elizabeth um, spoke a little bit before, really helps to um, guide your path to internship and full-time offers with consulting. And the Community Consulting Club is a hands-on opportunity to um, work in a team and provide a consulting um, support to local Ann Arbor or near Ann Arbor uh, or nonprofit organizations. So I think those two um, clubs really helped uh, me demonstrate the skills. I think, in addition, MAP is an, a great program. MAP is a multidisciplinary action program that um, you do at the end of your first year at Ross, and you, you work with teams of six to seven of your classmates across the different sections, and everybody has different backgrounds and experiences, and you um, are assigned to a company or a nonprofit to help them solve uh, a, an issue or a problem that they're facing. And I do think it's um, fairly similar to a consulting engagement uh, in the ways that you work with others and um, are really trying to help drive value to the company that you're supporting. Carmen, could you talk a little bit more about your map? and? You know, what you learned from that experience, what it was like working with that team? Sure. So my MAP um, project was based in Brussels. I was working with uh, AstraZeneca. They were doing a, um, initially what they asked for was some cost accounting help. So how can they drive costs down for um, different packaging items and things like that. And, the way we ended up solving the, the problem was really an incentive-based solution. So 
Uh, it wasn't about you know, making packaging cheaper. It was about having managers um, choose cheaper options to begin with um, and incentivizing in, them in that way. And um, I worked, I would say my, my team was comprised of, of a variety of different backgrounds, healthcare, technology, um, kind of systems, and me a nonprofit. And, and I think we were able to provide the solution that the client was looking for along with some um, guidance from two faculty members along the way. Great. Katie, when you kicked us off there, you mentioned case competitions. I know that's something that I wasn't familiar with when I came to Ross and quickly came to enjoy. Liz, I know the Deloitte case competition wrapped up last week. Would you mind telling our prospective students a little bit about what case competitions are and maybe uh, talk about how Deloitte looks at them in the context of a candidate's application? Sure. Um, I will start by saying, um, I think as you look across different firms and different case competitions, there may be some variety in the format or exactly how they run things, but this should give you a, a good general overview. Um, Deloitte conducts uh, a case competition on each of our you know, major MBA campuses each year. And what it is is we ask MBAs to get into teams of about four students. And at a set kind of day and time, we give you a case. It's typically a kind of written summary of the problem along with a data pack that contains a lot of um, sort of, I'll call it raw materials, things like, uh, you know, emails between a client and the team, um, you know, the company's financials from the past couple of years, um, their marketing materials. Um, and they ask a broad question. Um, for last year's case competition, um, the question was around how Intelligentsia, the coffee company, could expand their operations. There were a lot of different avenues they could go down, and we wanted to hear from students and teams what route they thought they should pursue and what the business benefit of doing so would be. So we get, um, and we ask you to do that in the form of a, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, we take those back, and our first round of judging is kind of looking at all of these presentations and trying to pick out the ones that we think um, you know, are really telling the most compelling story. Who's really used the information that they have, applied their creativity, um, presented that information in a way that it's easily understandable. Um, and from there, we choose, um, I, I believe this year it was about 12 teams um, to present in the finals. And in the finals, we ask you to kind of expand upon your initial thinking, um, tell us your story and your vision for the company. Um, and the judges are a panel of Deloitte partners and directors, so some of our um, you know, most strategic thinkers. Um, and they choose the uh, top three teams. And the top team is selected to go down to uh, um, uh, a conference in January um, where across all of our MBA uh, schools, the top, um, you know, the top team from each school will be there. It's typically a total of 16 to 20 teams presenting. And from all of the MBA campuses, we choose um, the top three teams overall. So, you know, it's a chance to really, um, you know, exercise your, your thinking skills, um, work through, you know, developing your teamwork skills. Um, pair it up with your um, with your classmates and um, deliver what you think is a solution to a real business problem. Um, and if you make it to the finals, it's a great opportunity to get to know some of your peers um, across other business schools. Um, I think you'll find that once you start at a firm, whether it's consulting or otherwise, after graduation, you'll form a network of other people who have recently come out of MBA programs. And this is a great way to get a head start on that. Fantastic. Now, I know case competitions, it's not really something I encountered when I was looking at schools. But then once I got here, I found that it was a wonderful way to just go hands-on into a problem like many other things that we do at Ross. So I, I felt like case competitions allowed me to see what being a consultant would actually be like. And it could supplant my classroom learning, my map, 
um, leadership crisis challenge, all of these other things that we do that put you in a situation where you're making quick decisions and working with a lot of information all at once. So I, I think that everyone enjoyed the Deloitte case competition last week, and we'll have a bunch more this fall. Um, so let's switch gears a bit, and I want to talk about um, how your each of your decisions to pursue a career in consulting has affected your long-term career. And Allison, you might be a great person to kick us off here, having moved on from consulting to pursue um, education. And can you t talk a little bit about your pr career progression and where you are now? consulting has helped you or affected your career? Um, sure. And so my career has been a, a bit, um, a, maybe a bit unique um, in that I did do consulting before Ross um, and, and worked for BCG right after Ross. But um, I've always had a strong interest for education. Um, I have always thought about maybe becoming a teacher. Um, during Roth, I was exposed to a program called Education Pioneers, which is a way for people who have not necessarily had classroom experience, maybe they have, maybe not, um, but from business, policy, all different backgrounds to become involved in the education sector. So this interest has always been there. Um, but as I mentioned before, you know, during Roth, I was like, oh, this consulting skill set's really good. I want to continue to develop it. ECG seems like a good opportunity. I'll stay on that path. Um, well, about a year ago, um, I was, you know, reflecting on my experience at BCG, which um, overall very, very positive. Um, but I, you know, had always this strong interest in education, and so was thinking about, all right, if I really want to chase after education, um, I'm, I'm going to make a transition out of BCG, and looked at a, a range of options and. One thing that became clear was that a lot of people were very much valuing the consulting background, so that was helpful. If I if I was going to take on, let's say, a strategy role or even um, an operations role, they're like, oh well, consultants, you know, have a good a good foundation analytically, that kind of thing. Um, but I actually decided, no, I want to get some really on the ground experience. I'm going to become a teacher. So um, pretty, not quite as common to become a teacher two years after business school, but that's what I did. Um, I taught ninth grade math last year. Um, tremendous experience. I had I decided not to stay in that in the long term, and then kind of went back to okay, wow, I just learned a lot. I was as in the trenches as one can get. Um, what do I want to do from here? And I've had lots of conversations with folks about. Well, what do you really enjoy? You know, do you enjoy having ownership over something where you're saying, like, I own, you know, I own this product or this team, and I'm really going to see this initiative forward, and maybe it's going to take two years, or maybe it's going to take five years, but you're like really invested in one thing. And folks who choose, you know, a marketing path or maybe some other paths often have that. They're saying, I want to own it. I want to be part of the implementation. Um, and as I was really honest with myself, I'm thinking, you know, I really like being an advisor. With my friends, I like giving advice. Sometimes they ask for it, sometimes not. But it's just like kind of my personality that I enjoy being presented with some challenge, some problem, and saying, hmm, how would you go about that? And at least for me personally, I'm not as, I, I don't feel as compelled to be part of one thing for many, many years. Um, so after teaching and thinking, okay, I do have this on-the-ground experience again at school, I have some different options now that I didn't have before, I actually chose to return to consulting based on the fact that I've realized, at least for me personally, that I really enjoy the advising process and then also the variety that both Liz and Katie have talked about. Great. Liz, you're, you're um, another interesting case because a lot of people think about consulting as sort of a two years and out kind of thing, and you have stuck around. You are working as the senior manager at Deloitte, and you um, did your summer there. You are bringing more breadth of experience. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what keeps you in consulting? Sure, absolutely. And, you know, for you know, women who are dialing in just starting to think about this as a career or it's what you've always known you've wanted to do as a career, I, I do encourage you to, you know, keep in the back of your mind what Elizabeth is talking about. You know, for 
um, some people consulting is something that they want to do for a couple of years to build a skill set or get exposure to different things and that they, they know in the end there's something else that they, they see themselves in for the long term. For other people, um, you know, it really can be a career. It really can be where you build, um, build your career and, and stay for the long term. Um, I will tell you that I've never had a grand plan of I am definitely going to do consulting forever. Um, rather, it's been that I have really enjoyed the work that I've done at Deloitte. Um, I've really enjoyed the um, challenge associated with um, solving complicated problems, with working with really interesting but really different clients. Um, and so I never really had a desire to go elsewhere. Um, you know, I, I do encourage you, though, um, you know, from, you know, internship on to look to, you know, get to know your colleagues, get to know what has kept them um, interested in the profession, get to know what they did before um, as people depart, what they're going on to do. You know, I think that um, careers are, you know, last or a long part of your life these days. I think it is really important to consistently reflect on whether this is a good fit for you or whether there's something else that, um, that you feel like would suit you better. Um, and just a, you know, sort of a final note on this, I think um, with a lot of other companies, a lot of other industries, if people leave, they go on their own and look for a new job, and they take that position, and they move on. I think that a lot of um, consulting firms are a little bit unique in that they have great relationships with a lot of the companies that they work with. And so many times if you're getting to a point where you, you know, if I was to say, um, you know, I don't think consulting is a good fit for me, I wonder if there's a role in health plan operations. Um, there, you know, we have um, relationships at various um, companies and folks within Deloitte that are dedicated to helping, you know, people like me say, all right, Liz, is it really health plan operations or based on your background, should you maybe be targeting your search somewhere else? And then helping you um, see, identify opportunities at those companies. Um, so that, that placement support and that connection to their alumni is something that's fairly unique to the consulting industry and something that I also encourage you to keep in mind as you think about um, consulting as a career for you. Great. Katie and Carmen, you are both a little bit newer to consulting, although still a few years in. Has consulting been what you expected? What has surprised you most about it? We will start with Carmen. I think the, the thing that surprised me the most coming into consulting was how great the people are that I get to work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I knew that I wanted to go into consulting so that I would have a, a challenging career, um, but I didn't necessarily um, expect to have people so supportive of my career, um, like interests or things that I want to, or passions within the firm that I'd like to pursue. So I, I would say that um, Consulting has been kind of what I've looked for and, and more from a um, interest and passion perspective. Um, I will say that everybody warned me about the, the work-life balance and how travel can be tricky and Accenture is a more of a national staffing model for projects, so um, the travel has been a lot, but it was what I expected going in. And um, my classmates at Ross, who were in consulting before, um, provided a lot of insight into that prior to me um, joining full time. And Katie, how about you? What has surprised you most about consulting? Um, I would say what surprised me most is, is how collaborative we are with the clients. Um, I always heard, oh, we collaborate, um, which I sort of thought was a little you know, kind of phrase that people use, but but we're actually sitting in the conference room every day, whiteboarding, brainstorming with the client, understanding the client's particular situation. So one of my cases, we did 60 different client interviews in about two weeks, starting the case off. Um, so we really try to understand the particular situation the client is the client is in now. Um, and I find that really exciting. Um, I would also say, unfortunately, not 
not the same as Carmen. I've been surprised the travel has been not as bad as I anticipated. Um, BCG does more of a regional staffing model. Um, so for the most part, I'm getting on a plane for less than a two-hour flight um, and have been on a few different local cases. So that's been kind of a nice surprise. Um, it's just that the travel hasn't quite been as bad. But, um, you know, I think, I think the true collaboration has been something surprising and exciting for me. Yeah, my tra I was wondering what my travel experience would be like this summer. Before Ross, I was at Google, and I worked a, a really nice 40-hour work week. My dog came to work with me. And then this summer, I found myself you know, at the airport at 7 a.m. on Monday morning. But I was surprised at how manageable it was. And even with uh, women with families in my office and mentors over the course of the summer, I saw a variety of ways to make it work. So talking a little bit about that, can, um, uh, can we talk about, about your experience with um, women in your office who have been able to make it work, whether it's you, if you have a family, um, or if you have a mentor at your firm, can you talk about the way that you're able to cater to your lifestyle and actually have a life and be a consultant? I would say that um, in terms of managing the, the work-life balance, um, the best advice I've gotten from women in the firm is be your own advocate. Um, so in terms of if you need to stay home a week and if you need to go to the doctor and if you need to prioritize things for yourself, no one's going to know that except you. So it's just um, one of those jobs where I think you just need to really speak up and, and say what's on your mind, and um, people um, are really supportive and understanding. OK, that's great. So we've got a lot of perspectives on the line who will be recruiting for internships. And this is an audience question we're taking. Remember, audience, you can submit as many questions as you would like through the chat feature. So um, Katie, you are recruiting some interns right now. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Um, and we want to know how competitive is it? What, um, did you, what do you recommend candidates do as they're beginning the internship recruiting process? So, you know, the, I would say the first year recruiting process is, is a long process. Um, there's a number of kind of get to know you events um, leading up to when resumes are submitted to the different firms. So we're doing things like the case competition, which we held last week. We're doing kind of receptions to get to know people. Um, I've done office hours with anyone who wants to talk to BCG. Um, we've also done, um, you know, our main campus presentation. So typically then, um, mid-December, students submit their resumes to BCG um, and then kind of come back from Christmas all rested and ready to go. Um, and then in the mid to late January, early February time frame is when uh, students, first-year students, begin to interview. Um, so for consulting, Typically, um, at least for BCG, that means a case interview, um, as well as some fit, which I would say, you know, the consulting club helps out a lot with uh, career services, prepares students as well. Um, we come back on campus and, and talk about how to do a case interview, um, but those do require some practice. Um, so we do first rounds on campus, and then second rounds are done in, within each office. Um, and so this is a really great opportunity for students to really see where they would potentially be interning. Um, it is a competitive process, um, but I know the consulting club does a fantastic job of kind of preparing students each step of the way um, so that, you know, you're ready and prepared. Um, you know, we're looking, you know, we, we'd like to hire as many as we can. Um, it really just comes down to um, skill and performance. 
Okay. Katie, you're talking about these, these interns. I know I'm seeing a lot of them right now. I mentioned at the start of the call that I am a fact group leader. So a lot of MBA ones are doing their first cases. And sometimes you get people who have come in and might have read a book, might have seen a case interview before. I'm seeing a lot of folks who are looking at a blank page and saying, what's going on? So I, I know that it's nice we have this peer support network where anyone can come in and book my time. And that's a, a nice and I think very unique thing about Ross, um, the way that we help students prepare for interviews. Liz, you also, um, I know you led some recruiting for Deloitte last year and have seen a lot of candidates come in for internships who may or really may not have any experience with consulting. So can you talk a little bit about career switchers and how switching into a consulting career works um, as through going through the recruiting process? Is it something where you're going to get a lot of questions about, oh, you don't know how to do this? Or is it something that the firm will look really favorably upon? Yeah, um, I think that it is best if you are a career switcher to think about, you know, what have you done in your past life that is uh, relies upon similar core skills um, as what you'd be doing in consulting. Um, and, you know, that can mean that you were um, working as a financial analyst for a, comp for, uh, a, a bank or um, a company like Target, and you know the finance function of an organization really well. Or it can be that you were a classroom teacher and you were a master at problem solving and breaking down why students were having problems um, understanding subject material and coming up with um, targeted lessons for various groups. Um, so, you know, it, it, if you had a business career, that's great. If you had um, a career kind of outside of what you typically think of as a quote unquote MBA job, um, that's okay too. You just need to think through what you've done that has relied you to um, be strategic, to um, be a problem solver, to be analytical, um, and make sure that as you share kind of why you're making this career switch with um, firms that you're talking to, that you're able to articulate how what you've done before is going to help you in your career as a consultant or will be usable in your career as a consultant. The second thing, um, you know, is thinking about um, what you want to get out of the MBA program. So if you're coming from a non-traditional, you know, career, and we can stick with the teacher example, I think we've talked about it a couple times, you know, early on you may want to have a meeting with a career counselor um, and some of the other advisors available at Ross and meet with um, uh, some of your second year peers who have done internships and consulting and get their feedback on the coursework that's going to be most helpful for you on the club experiences um, that are going to be most useful to you. So just to give you one example, Ross has a great um, community consulting club that um, works with nonprofits in the area um, and performs consulting type engagements for them. That's a great way to kind of get your feet wet um, in a consulting type um, environment. And you know, first of all, try it out. You know, make sure it is something that you do really like. And second, start to get some experience under your belt. Um, the third thing that I recommend, and I think Katie was talking about this earlier, is um, you know, cases are a big part of just about every firm's interview um, approach. And if you haven't been in consulting before, they probably are uh, new to you. Um, and so the earlier you learn their format, learn their structure, um, learn how to work through a case and um, uh, get to results, um, the easier a, pro a time you're going to have in the interview process because they are sort of one of those um, core competencies and things that just about every firm is, is looking for you to be able to demonstrate proficiency with. Fantastic. We've got another audience question here. And Carmen, I think you might be able to help us with this one. Could you tell us a little bit more about how roles vary as you progress in your tenure at the firm? And coming more recently out of the MBA program, what differentiates your role? 
So um, I would say there's probably about four general roles uh, within consulting, and, and there's some variation of these roles um, at all the firms. I would say that when you come out of undergrad, there's the analyst role that progresses to a consultant role, um, and then a manager role, um, and maybe a senior manager role, and then and partner. Um, so excuse me, there are five. Um, I think that generally you spend three to four years in each of those roles prior to um, making partner. After your MBA program, you generally come out at a senior consultant level. So you come out kind of at the the end of doing your three to four years of an, as an analyst and a three to four years as a consultant. And the expectation is that you know, shortly thereafter you'll be progressing onto the next level um, manager or something similar. And um, I think the big differentiation is at that level is they expect you to be able to come in and, and, and partner with clients and really um, be able to lead work and manage projects. Now, um, the way most projects are structured, at least within Accenture, is they, they can be very large projects with multiple work streams. Um, and I think the general expectation is that you wouldn't come in and lead the entire project, but that's a more partner level activity. But you would um, take a lower level work stream and and execute the project plan aligned to that work stream, partner with the client aligned to that work stream, and um, deliver the, the end product or the deliverables aligned to that work stream. I think, there are, I think there are definitely five roles, and I might even add a sixth to the list. If we think about summer interns who mm -hmm. could be coming from consulting or could be coming from a, a non-traditional background, so Katie, if you want to tell us a little bit more about what is it like to be a BCG intern? How is that experience different from full-time? Is it exactly like full-time? Um, I think it's pretty darn close to full-time. So you will be with a real client, on a real project, working on a real value-added piece of work. Um, so I often get questions around, you know, how do I select what project I want to be on? and you know, how can I get those preferences in? And, you know, the truth is, because they're real projects, we don't know usually until a week or two prior to the intern starting, um, you know, specifically what they'll be on because it is so real and so real time. Um, I know for our summer interns, they have a variety of different summer activities planned for them. Um, they really get to meet a lot of the senior leaders in the office. Um, but, you know, a summer consultant is a consultant, and they are going to be doing the work that, you know, a first-year consultant would be doing. Um, so I think they really get a great feel for what the internship is like, um, as well as, you know, the office culture and the company culture. Um, I know our summer interns did baseball games and events at the lake. We went bowling, um, and we actually do a summer retreat up north. So a lot of different opportunities to get to know the office and get to know your peers. Great. You spoke a little bit there about office culture and company culture. I want to talk about what it was like for each of you settling into that. Allison, can you talk about the culture of mentorship or the mentors that you might have had across your experience at ZS um, and BCG? Um, sure. Yeah, I, um, I I think that's a really really nice thing about consulting. Actually, um, is that there is such a strong mentorship culture in place, at least at the at those two firms, and then right now working at edu at Bellwether Education Partners, which is smaller but still has a lot of those same principles. Um, so at at both firms, I'd say there were like kind of two tiers of mentorship. Um, there was one mentor that was maybe one or two years senior to myself um, who had, you know, been through the process recently, remembers what it's like to be new, you know, in the beginning helps you, you know, with where's the bathroom and what should I wear to this type of client, um, but that is also, um, can also be a sounding board 
um, for particular projects and, and kind of whatever you might need, a safe person to talk to. Um, and then there's another tier of mentorship, which is around a career development advisor or a professional development manager. And that is meant to be someone who is kind of a constant in supporting, supporting consultants in their whole career. So because consulting is very project-based, you might have a different you know, boss, quote unquote, you know, the, the partner on your team. You might have a different person that you are working with every three months. Maybe it's every six months, but every time a project changes. And the career development manager, professional development manager, is there to you know, work with you to say, you know, let's work on your development goals. Let's understand some of you know, your strengths to build on and areas for development um, across projects. Um, so, so that's always nice to have like someone kind of at a more senior level overseeing the career as well as someone that you can go to day to day. Um, and then some firms would, in addition to that, have kind of a, a female mentorship, you know, buddy type program. Um, BCG did have that. Um, that might vary office to office um, and firm to firm, but, um, but that was just another supportive network and not super formal, but it was good for reinforcement about things like setting your boundaries um, and, and maybe different communication styles um, for, for the average um, woman relative to the average um, man in consulting. Great. We've got an, another audience question here, which is, are there industries within consulting that lend themselves to less travel? And I'll actually take that one myself as the tenured consultant in the room. Just kidding. Uh, this summer, and I, I think that in my, my search for a firm, that was cer certainly something that was in my mind. And what I saw was a lot of women and men making the decision to base either their set of clients or the types of problems that they worked on on what their preference to travel or, um, or not travel. And I think that if you move to a city where you can do a lot of CPG work and you have a lot of CPG clients who are local and that's what you're really passionate about, you have the ability to do that. Um, I saw other of my peers here at school make the decision to apply only to firms that had either a regional staffing model or um, actually just only did local work, didn't spend as much time as a client. So for women out there who are concerned about leaving kids or maybe your three-year-old standard poodle like I am behind, then I think that there's an option out there for everyone. Um, so you've just got to be, ask the good questions when you're interviewing, ask the good questions when you're learning about the firm to make sure that it's going to be the right fit for you and your, your life priorities, which are certainly as important as your career priorities, that you shouldn't have to sacrifice one for the other. Um, so I think we're almost at time here, and I want to thank all of our participants for helping us out, and I want to make sure we get in any last-minute advice that you might have for these guys as they're thinking about business school and contemplating a career in consulting. Katie, we'll start with you. OK. Um, so you know, I think thinking about your career and thinking about consulting, you know, I had a first year describe it to me as, as the residency of a business school. So you, know, you go into residency, and you get to try all sorts of things before you specialize for your fellowship. Um, and so I think that really appealing to me. Um, and I would say, you know, think about a business school that is very collaborative, very team focused. Um, you know, Roth has a fantastic management and organization practice. And of all my classes, I mean, those are the ones that keep coming up, um, you know, on every case. So, you know, really, you, you can't go wrong, but I think you know, thinking about those those key things that consulting firms are looking for um, will definitely help you in the long run. Carmen, any thoughts for our perspectives? I would say, um, first of all, I couldn't imagine get, getting into consulting um, and recruiting for consulting at any place other than Ross. I, I think it has all the um, support mechanisms that you could possibly ever need to uh, enter or enter a career in consulting. I think the, the classes are great. I think career services is um, very support, supporting. I think that um, 
the extracurricular clubs and the classmates you meet really do position yourself for, for consulting in the future. And um, I can constantly am talking to my alumni friends. We all graduated together and there are women in consulting. And even that network is just priceless to have um, after uh, graduating from Ross. Liz, any thoughts? Um, you know, I think that I would echo everything my colleagues have said, and I, I think you all are getting a great jump start on things by joining conversations like this. Um, I think that you will all find great support at Ross, and I encourage you to take advantage of that if you come here. Um, the career counselors um, available, um, both peer and um, sort of full-time employees, um, are amazing. Um, they did great work on my resume, um, on interview preparation, um, and I think also the community is so strong. Um, you know, so many people were willing to talk about what their internship experiences were like or their pre-MBA consulting experiences, and that inside information is so important when you're um, thinking about whether consulting is right for you or whether um, a specific firm is right for you. So, um, you know, it's never too early to start. And um, you know, definitely uh, ask questions of the people around you. Allison, what's your advice for these guys? Um, I mean, I, I very much agree with everything that's been said. Um, I, I would say the the one thing I will I will add on to it is that um, look, there's there's a lot of reasons why all of us have made the decision to go into consulting and are still in it now. And when you do get to campus, I mean, I, I agree that Ross is a, the consulting club at Ross and the peer career counselors, like, it is a, it's a pretty big force, to be honest. Like, there are a lot of folks who are interested in consulting and even more who are dedicated to supporting people in pursuing it. Um, so to the extent you can continue the type of research you're doing right now on is this, is this a path I want to pursue, I think is great. Um, because it is it is a great path for many reasons, but it's definitely not for everyone. And even asking kind of those tougher questions about why did you leave, why do most people leave, you know, and thinking about your own personality and, and what you want to get out of your career um, will only help you be more focused when you get to campus about, hey, is this something that I want to go full, you know, I'm going in full with both feet, um, or maybe maybe taking some time to explore some of their paths, too. That's all great advice. I wish that I had been on this webinar last year. <laughs> um, I want to thank all of y'all for participating. These guys' um, perspectives, these women are all very busy, and it's a testament to the Roth alumni community that they're on here today to speak to all of you. Um, and another reason I'd say that you're lucky is that when you're applying to business school and then next year, you're going to be both at a point in your life where people are lining up to help you and, and um, interview you to help you change careers or stay in the same path. Um, but then also people are lining up to pour resources into you and just help you grow and continue to learn. So I'm now thinking about the second half of my year. I'm excited to graduate and to go out and return to my firm, but I'm also really jealous that y'all are just starting in on this path. So um, I think Diana has a few more thoughts for you all as we wrap up. Great. I want to thank Elizabeth and our panel so much for participating. One of the things that we love about our Ross students and our alumni is their commitment back to the school. This is truly a school that has got a very, very strong pay it forward culture. And you see that um, play out in many different ways. One of the very strong ways that which you see it at school is the support that the students receive, both from the school as well as from fellow students and alums. Uh, around their career choices. So thank you, everybody, for participating tonight. We will be sending a follow-up e follow email with some links that you might be interested in, including links to our consulting club and employment reports. And I also want to encourage you to reach out to one of our over 150 student ambassadors or one of our alumni ambassadors to connect with um, our, our folks to get a feel for the career paths that they've chosen and how Ross has played value in that path for them. So thank you again for your participation this evening. We appreciate it, and we hope to see you here in Ann Arbor. Go Blue.